Hello everybody. Welcome back to How to Build a B-1 Bomber. Yeah, that's my other wing there. I'm fixing to pull some double duty. I know I told you guys I was going to hang that fuselage up and work on this other stuff. I ain't got time for that. I'm going to uh, work on this and uh, get this thing molded and when I'm waiting for resin to set and stuff like that I'm going to jump over here. We're running out of time folks. I sat down and looked at the calendar the other day and uh, whew, I got to go. I'm in full build building mode now and, uh, and uh, this movie's going to be coming hot and fast so stay close to that computer. And uh, I want to show you guys a little something. I got my hinges figured out. Them Robart pin hinges work awesome. And uh, see what I had to do is just glue little blocks of wood there. And I had to drill at an angle. Cause for these to open right, them points got to stick out. You see, they got to they gotta stick up just a little bit. Because I got to get the center of that hinge. See that little... Uh, pin in the center that has got to be the center of that pin has got to be uh, flush with the top in order for it to work right and I want to show you guys a little trip I haven't got them glued in yet I'm gonna wait till they're painted but uh, when I do these hinges another thing for these all to work right that hinge line has got to be straight. In other words, every center point has got to follow an imaginary line. Okay? Now how I get them straight, the quick easy method, is uh, I glue my two end ones in. Okay? And I make sure they're just how I want them. Just perfect. Okay? And then, once them has set up, I come in here and I uh, glue the, these others in. And before it sets all the way up, I stand them on a flat surface. Well, I stand them on a flat surface, okay? Now that evens out all my pins. So the center line is straight across the center, even though this might have a little bit of wave to it or something my pin line is still straight and that, that works pretty good and also these things were still wanting to warp slightly so I went ahead and glued a a hunk of wood on them ends so that'll give me a a nice door and it won't ever have no sag or nothing and it's pretty flimsy everything fits flush and perfect and uh, that's going to work awesome. I can't wait. But uh, I got them all hinged. That's my favorite part of building an airplane. Is when it starts to come alive. When I can start making parts work. When I get them air cylinders in there. And uh, just hook it up on a compressor and stuff. That just gets me all giddy inside. I uh, feel like Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> but that, that's my favorite part is when stuff starts working and uh, I just love that but I'm gonna get them air cylinders hooked up first I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these finished and uh, and like I said when my downtime on this wing I'm gonna jump back over here because I got a loss to do to that before it's done and I want that done we're running out of time we only got a couple months but uh, I've been busy Okay, I did take a day off or two and kind of relax and sit and think about all this stuff and what I need to do and and everything else. Okay, but I've been busy. See that? That is another roll of fiberglass. I was all out of fiberglass. When I laid this up, people, I used every bit of that 10 ounce cloth. I didn't think I was going to have enough when it started getting to the end and I had like a 12 inch piece you know after all that glass three layers of all of it I had like 12 inches left on that roll I couldn't believe it was that close I thought it was going to run out but I had enough but I did not have enough to do anything else and uh, that's a hundred and uh, 
125 yard roll. It's way more than I need. You know, I only need about 50 yards to finish this project because when I lay these wings up, I'm going to use a lighter cloth. I'm going to use Tom Cook's method. I'm going to try and get out to his shop before I actually lay these parts up because I want my wings a little better quality than my fuselage was and uh, but uh, I only needed about 50 yards okay now I'm going to tell you straight up and people like you know and they all do it they don't like cutting them rolls up okay I went in there needing about 50 yards I went in down to Associated Industries I was only needing about 50 yards and I asked him how much 50 yards would be and I about fell over when they told me it was like nine nine something a yard 960 or something like that and I said man that was I got it a lot cheaper last time they said well you bought a roll of it last time so I said well how much is a roll of this unit price three three ninety six and uh, man so I'm actually getting a hundred yards for the same price as 50 you know but I had to buy a hundred and 126 yards to get that price so I'm actually getting 50 yards free by buying that whole roll sounds kind of complicated but uh you know, none of them places like cutting them rolls up. They'd rather just ship that old box out the door and not even have to mess with it. So keep that in mind. When you guys call these places, when you're ordering fiberglasses, even from Associated Industries, okay, you got to ask them the roll price. Well, how much if I just buy that whole roll? And uh, you get a lot better deal. But I sure like them down there at Associated Industries. They're giving me some pretty good prices on this stuff, but... Uh, I went out, I almost spent dang near thousand dollars this morning. And uh, another cool thing I found is for years, you know, when people didn't like using uh, paint from the auto parts store because all you can get was flat clear. And uh, they, I mean, gloss, high gloss, clear. And, uh, but you know, they sold this flattening agent that I've mixed with my clear before. And it works. The problem is getting the formula right. You know, it's it's like chalk in there. And uh, you really got to mix that stuff up good and mix, you know, so many parts to your gallon. And uh, hope you have enough. Because if you run out, I've found that out in the past. You can't, even though you mix your exact, use your exact formula... One pot will be shinier than the next pot. And uh, I just fought that, you know. And then you got to re clear this stuff. You got to put more in it, re clear it. This stuff is already flat, flat finish. They just came out with this. I get this from O'Reilly's, O'Reilly's Auto Parts Store. Okay? Now they got O'Reilly's everywhere all over the United States, but not all of them sell paint. There's usually one in every town that does. And uh, the rest of them just sell auto supplies. But if you go to the O'Reilly's paint, this is a DuPont. Any place that sells DuPont will have this. And uh, you just got to make sure and shake up that whole gallon good before you use it. But this is a urethane clear. And I took... I actually took my landing gear down there and they uh, used their little machine and they matched my paint so because I want that matched I know a lot of people say you can't hardly tell but uh, I can tell and I just don't like that stuff see if you look at that landing gear plate and that bulkhead because I taped that landing gear plate thing off I mean it's a pretty big difference and I don't know maybe I'm just too picky but I wanted all this to match, so I went ahead and got another quart. And this is, I just got a, last time I just got a single stage. And I was going to leave it, uh, you know, glossy, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, flatten it down with some clear. But this ain't bad priced either. And uh, you get that and you get that.